This wine is super complex for something that's just over two bucks. Hold on, I'm gonna have a little bit more. My name is Matthew Horky. For the last six years, I've been traveling around the world tasting thousands of wines per year in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. And today, I'm talking about maybe the best place in the world to buy good, cheap wine. When it comes to wine, we always want to find the best value for money. And I'm in a country where I think the value for money is just completely off the charts. And that country is Portugal, a country that I absolutely love. Just a fantastic country, amazing people, wines out of this world. Some of these wines are so cheap. I think you can find outstanding value in the five to 12 euro range. I got wines that are all actually cheaper than that. Sometimes I have no idea how the farmers get paid on the grapes. I'm kind of on location, so I had to make a makeshift studio. I think it looks okay. I'm in the middle of a seven week jaunt through Europe. I'll be vlogging about that on YouTube shorts, so make sure you're subscribed. I love Portugal so much. There's so much history here when it comes to wine. I like the food. I used to think it was just rustic, but as you travel through the country, you see a lot of more regional diversities. The people are incredibly friendly and the wines, the quality is so high for a low price. Plus, Portugal has all these unique grape varieties you really can't find anywhere else on the planet. I'm going to jump right into these wines. I went to a local supermarket, picked up all these wines. I got all five of these wines for less than $13. That's right. Crazy, right? You know, as you grow up in the wine world, especially when you're working in wine, I'm usually tasting more expensive, more finer wines, but you know, everybody can afford these wines. And that's why I think Portugal is so cool. First up, we have the Terra de Frades Vinho Verde. This doesn't actually have a vintage on it. It's a blend of regional grapes from Vinho Verdes. In the north of Portugal, uh, one of the most common grapes is Alvarinho, although there's Larejo and there's a, a bunch of other stuff. Light, crisp, 10.5% alcohol. A lot of Vinho Verdes are crisp. Sometimes they even have a little bit of a frasante action going on, some bubbles. These are great wines for shellfish or just to sip on during a hot summer day. This was 3 euro 80 cents, so we're talking about just over four bucks. Vinho Verde means green wine, but the wine is not actually green. It's just from a region in Portugal that's wet and very green. It smells pretty decent. It smells like a fresh Vinho Verde. It has some floral components, lime, lemon, stone, a little bit of grass even. It's even a little bit frizzy in the mouth, a little bit of frothy. No, not the most complex beverage in the world, but it has decent length. For a four year old wine, hold on a second before I get too excited. <laughs> I think it's very good. <laughs> to be honest, this is definitely a buy for four bucks. I'd actually be happy to drink this with lunch. Pretty decent, actually. Wow. That was a good start. Next up, I guess we have Rosé All Day. This is the Urbe Augusta uh, from Mignot, Vigno Regional Mignot. In the north, you have Mignot, which takes up a bigger area, and then, then you have Vigno Verde within this. There are red wines made in Vigno Verde. This does not have a vintage or a grape on it. This was a whopping €1.99, so we're talking about $2.20 max for a bottle of rosé that's 10 and a half alcohol. Nice color. I'm guessing if it's up there, it's made from the grape Susau, uh, but I'm not sure. Let's give it a go. I have a little bit of frizzy going on in here. You know, Portugal is famous for the rosé called Matius, which is a lot of people's first wine. Funny thing, a few years ago, I was at a fancy winery that is owned by the big company that owns Matius, and I said, you know what, I've never actually had Matius before. We were at this white glove dinner, so they came out and they served this like cheap bottle of Matius rosé, because it's the first time I actually tasted it. All right, let's give this a go. This is not as exciting to me as the Vinho Verde. It's just, it just smells like Jolly Rancher strawberry. Smells kind of fake. This actually smelled like wine. This smells something like, you know, industrial. Okay, it's a little frizzy. It's a dry rosé, but just has a touch of sweetness. It really tastes like strawberry or watermelon Jolly Rancher candy. I don't love this. Finish is completely dies, but I think a lot of people are gonna like this. A lot of people that don't care about wine, they just wanna pound something crispy and refreshing. It tastes actually a little bit more like almost a fruit juice cocktail. <laughs> Not getting me super excited, but at $2.20, I mean, there's a lot of other worse ways you could spend your money. Vino Verde is much more exciting. Matter of fact, before we go, go into the reds, let me double check this. Make sure I didn't screw up, because a lot of times cheap wines can start to disappear and start to get worse even with a little bit of oxygen. Vino Verde is still very solid at that price. Drinking out of a nice simple glass, nothing fancy. I'm running this apartment, didn't have fancy glasses, but if you're buying these type of wines, 
gotta be drinking out of these simple glasses. No judgment, not judging. Next up is where I think Portugal really shines in terms of cheap wine, and that's red wine, vinho tinto in Portuguese. Uh, a lot of people love to drink red wines, the locals included. These wines are priced ridiculously well. First up, I have the Vinhas de Pegoix from the Setubal Peninsula. I'm in Lisbon currently. It's right across the Tagus River in Lisbon, 2020. Uh -huh. This is a whopping uh, one euro and 80 cents. So we're talking about two bucks for a bottle of red. It's uh, made from the grapes Castelao, Syrah, and a couple of other grapes, 2020. Let's see here. The peninsula of Setubal is actually famous for a sweet wine. It's called Moscatel de Setubal. It's a sweet wine, fortified wine, kind of made in the port style with a white grape, a little more flowery. Let's see how this is. Castellao and Syrah. Decent blend. Let's see here. It smells like the Syrah. This really comes out like black pepper, a little bit of blackberry. Not super complex, just kind of black fruit, just a simple wine. Fresh, 2020, it's not super old. This says it can age for another five years. I don't know, I don't know. we'll let's see here. Light, 13% alcohol. Is it the most mind-blowing wine in the world? No. Is it something I'm gonna be fine with taking to a barbecue picnic? It even has a little bit of tannin, which some of these cheap wines don't have. That's uh, for two bucks. I think it's pretty, This the first time I went to Portugal, <laughs> I was having the uh, the Prado do Dia, which is the menu of the day, and sometimes they would just include a bottle of red wine, and the whole meal would be like six, seven, eight euros, and I was like, how could they do that and throw a bottle of wine in? I guess if you're spending two bucks on a bottle of wine, or even less than that, you can do that. <laughs> I don't think that wine geeks, or serious wine people are gonna like this, but this is more than delicious enough for most people to enjoy. And the cool thing I like about the reds, the cheap reds in Portugal, they don't taste fake, they don't taste chemically, they just taste like wine. Next up is a red I'm super excited to try. It's from my favorite region in Portugal called the Dao. They sometimes call it the Burgundy of Portugal. I've been there before, it's up high on a plateau. A lot of the vineyards are hidden. The red wines are fruity, but they're a little bit more elegant. This is made for the grocery market that I went to, the Pingo Doce. This is the Dao Tinto, red 2019. Miguel Oliveira is the winemaker. He is a famous winemaker. I do know of his name here in Portugal. The grapes are Tariga Nacional, Aragonés, Afrochar, and Jayan. Jayan is also known as Menthia across the border in Galatias in Spain. One euro, 99 cents. You know, one of the best, most memorable red, cheap reds I've had in Portugal. I can't remember the name of the producer, but I bought it, it was from the Dow for five euro, 70 cents. So we're talking about six bucks and it was like a 90 plus point type of wine for me. I thought it was outstanding. Uh, the Dow, I usually get a lot of piney notes. Let's give this a go. If this is really a good $2 and 20 cent wine, I'm gonna go crazy here. <laughs> It smells like the Dow. I smell like pine forest, which I actually like. Pine forest, blackberry, a little bit of licorice. In terms of complexity, this blows the first red out of the water. It's a little bit spicy. It's even got some tan and a finish. It kind of thins out on the back end. This wine is super complex for something that's just over two bucks. Hold on, I'm gonna have a little bit more. It's more complex than the first one. It's not a groundbreaking wine, but would I drink it? Yes. It, I just, I have no idea how I can do this and pay the farmers. You gotta think, you gotta buy the cork. I, I guess it's helpful that cork, you know, a lot of it comes from Portugal. You got the bottle, the cork, that alone, you know, we're already talking, maybe it gets up in the two, $2 range. Plus you gotta deal with shipping, handling, you know, I don't know if all the employees are working for free or what. That's crazy. A decent one for two, so I, a thumbs up on that one. Let's go to the third one. This is the most expensive wine. My Portuguese is not so good. The Herdade Cata Perrajro. We would in English say Cata Perrajro. I don't know. A single vineyard wine for three euros and 49 cents. So we're talking less than four bucks. Blend of Alicante, Boucher, Toriga, Nacional, and Merlot from Tejo, which is very new Lisbon, um, 2020. Let's see. Cracks me up that you can have a wine labeled as a reserve wine for so cheap. But uh, it's Portugal, you know, whatever. Let's give it a go here. Alicante Boucher, you know, it's a French grape. A lot of people think of it as a crappy grape, but actually can make some fine wines, especially in Tejo and Alentejo. You know, most red wine grapes, the flesh is actually white. All the color comes from the skins. That's where you get red wine color. But Alicante Boucher is what they call a tinturier. So the flesh is actually dark as well. This is the most complex out of the bunch. This might even have a little bit of oak in it. Smell a little bit of wood, but not too oaky. 
It smells kind of waxy, almost like wax, chocolate, uh, blackberries, black cherry. This smells a little bit more chemically than, than the Dow wine. Palette full body, and you get oak. This is gonna be more of the crowd pleaser. A lot of people are gonna like this because they like some of the chocolate, some of the oaky notes. A lot of people that like big oaky wines, if you're eating meat, this covers it up perfectly. It, the tan, the finish is a little bit less on this. Not bad, but go with the Dow. I think what we saw here is when you're in Portugal, like I was talking about, you can get some outstanding wines. The cool thing is Portugal has a lot of its own wine grapes, so a lot of grapes you haven't heard of, they don't sell at a premium price. Plus locals, you know, demand a higher quality at a lower price, so you're gonna get some good wines. The Dao, the Vinho Verde, I thought were very good in that price point. If I'm in Portugal, I'm drinking for myself, I would always step up to at least the seven euro, so the eight to $15 range, you're gonna get fantastic wine. In Portugal, when you start to spend over 20 bucks, you're getting extraordinary stuff. I'd love to hear, do you think there's another country that competes with Portugal in terms of price quality? Do you have success for shopping for wine in the supermarket? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks a lot. See you soon.